Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Child United Methodist Church, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, you'll notice things are a little different today. Um, Pastor Craig, Patangela, and Andy are all up at Lake Jimleska for the um, closing worship at annual conference. We have a special guest today, Dr. Virgil Lattimore, who is president of Hood Theological Seminary. Uh, next Sunday, June 25th, a new uh, sermon series will begin with Tangela preaching, a uh, series called Hashtag BUMC, and Tangela will be preaching on what does it mean to be United Methodist and why does it matter? Please join me in the call to worship. We have a great joy in Christ, our Lord, who calls and heals us. For a while we bemoan our sufferings. Yet we are reminded that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Let us pray. Spirit of wisdom and hope. We witness your glory in the heavens and hear your call to us. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of your compassionate care. Open our hearts this day to hear and respond in joy to your call, that we may serve you faithfully all our days. Amen. Now let's stand and sing number 400 in your hymnal, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Lord, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise in our minds. We ask you, Lord, to settle us down amidst all of the tra trauma and toil that is taking place in our world. We ask you, O oh Lord, to make us appreciative for the fathers in our lives, the men who have stood for grace and strength and love and guidance and correction. We also ask you, Lord, to be with the families that may be without their fathers and ask you to walk with them as they move into the present and even on into the future. And now, Lord, we ask you to hear the concerns of your people as they share the names of any persons that are in need of your prayer, your solstice, and your support. Martha Ann, Betsy, Brenda and Mike, Paulette, Lisa and Barbara. For the Methodist Church. Mary Brenton, Julie Brenton, Kathy Curry, Sandra Curry. Lord, for these names and those names that are now being whispered by those that are in the congregation, we ask your ever-present guidance, your ever-present direction, your ever-present support, that we, your people, who are called by your name may walk with them and let them know that we as brothers and sisters are concerned about them, but most of all, that your eyes are upon them, your hands have never left them, and your goodwill and your faith will follow them all the days of their lives. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, to say, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Now let's stand to, to sing the hymn of preparation, um, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, number 402. Mm -hmm.
read from Romans 5, 1 through 5. <coughs> Therefore, since we've been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems, because we know that trouble produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. Good morning. It is an honor to speak uh, to the congregation this morning. And um, uh, your pastor and his associate, and I bring you greetings uh, from Hood Theological Seminary, from the faculty and staff and students of our, of our seminary, and uh, where we are preparing women and men for bold, creative leadership for the Christian church for a diverse world. And I want to express appreciation to your pastor, Dr. Craig Sepper, who has blessed our student body with um, a few clergy robes that he donated to the seminary, that he came and donated to the seminary and introduced himself to me uh, a few months ago. And uh, those are being made uh, good use So I asked you to join me this morning, and uh, he told me I had about an hour to preach. Is that, is that right? <laughs> oh, you're laughing, so you said right. Uh, but no, uh, join me um, as I share from the topic, Character Counts, uh, that was read so well by uh, our reader this morning. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for safe travel and for your goodness to us as your children. Teach us to appreciate each day and each opportunity, Lord, to share the good news of your love for humanity, your love for the world, that we might follow you and be with you one day and celebrate all that you have meant to us. In the name of your son we pray, amen. In the church, the uh, the dominant discussion is often about faith. Well, this makes sense. In most houses of worship. But we come here to church every Sunday to learn about faith, how to get it, how to keep it, how to grow it, and how to share it. I believe life gets better when we have good faith, more than good religion. Those things are different, having faith and having religion. Faith is a powerful thing. Jesus said it is not how much you have, but it is the quality of faith that you have that makes a difference. So whether you possess a lot of it it's important to have a little, a little faith. In the Gospel of Matthew, in the 17th chapter, in the 21st, Jesus says, For truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and nothing will be impossible for you. This is a quality of faith that is often rarely obtained. We can in fact achieve it if we are grounded in the one that holds the key to that reality, which is Jesus. However, this morning I want to 
talk about a topic that is just as important as faith, not more important, but just as important, something that affects our faith and our ability to be witnesses of faith and an example of faithfulness, which is the issue of character. So the topic, character counts. In fact, character determines how we walk and how we walk the walk of faith. I invite you to walk with me this morning as, as we examine the issue of character. And I warn you that character is, is the mission if you choose to accept it. Some of you may remember uh, the 70s TV series, <laughs> Mission Impossible. And, and I know that might date me, uh, believe it or not, but I used to watch that. Um, but I want to talk about the updated, not the updated version with Tom Cruise, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But the notion here is the same. The challenge is the same. That is, I believe as, as, as people of faith, God gives us a special mission. And it's a mission that involves high security. And it's often, I believe, God makes us secret agents in the world. That people need to detect if we are in fact followers of Christ. As Jesus said, uh, they will know you are mine by the fruit you bear. That becomes very important. And the message is not often, you know, most of us don't walk around with with um, messages on our forehead saying I'm a Christian. But the reality is, it is important, I think Jesus says, the world will know you are Christians by my love. And again, character comes into play at that point. The Apostle Paul is conveying a message of peace and hope. And as he builds and his point for convincing his audience, his hearers and his instructions, the cornerstone of his mission is saying it is grace through faith. Each of us has to encounter it, has to bear it. And I speculate that Paul's words to the Roman community of believers that he says to them in this scripture that was read earlier, glory in your suffering. Now that's not a very encouraging word, but he said we should be happy about our suffering because it affirms, he's saying, the difficulties that we encounter should say something about the fact that we are in fact following one who has really come to the earth to make peace. And each day of our lives presents an opportunity to display our character and we must accept the difficulties that go with that mission. In Paul's assessment, if we have gone through an experience of struggle, our faith has been tested and hopefully our character has been enhanced. Our faith has been tested and hopefully our character then now counts. Eleanor Roosevelt said, said this, our character begins in our infancy and continues unto death. So we don't get character one time and then we're done. It's a daily, weekly, monthly thing. In fact, I would make a uh, make it a minute by minute, an hour by hour challenge. Sometimes if you're stuck in traffic and somebody is in front of you or behind you, they're testing your character. Character isn't, isn't inherited. One builds it daily by the way one thinks and acts, thought by thought, action by action. If one lets fear or hate or anger take possession of the mind, they become forged in chains. Your character can make room for you. Your character can make you a prisoner also in many ways. 
I like what Horace Mann said, that character is what God and the angels know of us. Reputation is what men and women think of us. Having examined your, and I would ask the question this morning, have you examined your character lately? Character goes deeper than the skin that bears tattoo messages sometimes. Character extends beyond the colorful, elegant designer clothes that we wear. Character speaks louder and more clearly than the words that are spoken and by any religious or political or professional leader. Character is an inside job. And I think it sits in our hearts along with faith. As we talked about earlier, that faith is important. Character is right there behind, walking right behind. Character is not made in gymnasiums. Champions are made from something that is inside of them, that is bigger than the strength or the skill that they can display in an arena. Jesus said these words, following him is going to be tough going as in carrying crosses. You know, Jesus did not ask us to bear the cross. That's what Jesus did. We have little crosslets and some of you wear, wear crosses and I call them crosslets. They're not real, real crosses that Jesus bore. So what's ahead for the person of faith? Jesus came and he displayed character. You remember the blind writer, Helen Keller, who wrote so eloquent, eloquently in her books and her books of reflection. She said this, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience and trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened. Vision clear, ambition inspired, success achieved. And this is a woman who's blind and deaf telling us about character. Character is behavior that can stand the scrutiny of the dark and the light of day. This is a Chinese proverb. If you don't any, if you don't any, want anyone to know it, don't do it. <laughs> I like the words in Ecclesiastes 42, which says, "Have regard for your name, since it will remain with you longer than a great store of gold." Can I remind you that the spirit that has guided and given many of us our position in life is the same spirit that will tutor us and instruct us is character. And I would hope it would be the character and the example of Christ that is the real example that we follow. The acceptance of Jesus as Savior is the acceptance of a mission to go on a journey of character. It is a journey of faith, but it is marked by steps of character. And the fact that my character cannot judge your character is a fact. Each day we rise, we should stretch out our character muscles by the words of the wonderful Margaret Duro, who says, these words, give me a clean heart that I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. For I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart and I will follow thee. I'm not asking for the riches of the land. I'm not asking for high men and women to call and know my name. Please, Lord, give me a clean heart 
and I will follow thee. Give me a clean heart and I will follow thee. Most of all, as I close, our character is examined by God. And God knows our character through and through. Much like the psalmist that David is attributed to writing in Psalm 139. And he saw it says, he says this, it is it's really an invitation for character. And we know David had some really ups and downs in his own character, but he was still that man after God's own heart. He said, Lord, search me and know me. Know my down sitting and my uprising. You are acquainted with all my ways. If there's a word in my mouth, you know it, Lord. You know how I think, you know how I feel. You know me through and through. And that would be the prayer that I would leave you with this morning. Your character counts. And God knows that oh so well. God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks today for your goodness and mercy. Teach us, Lord, to rise up every day to take a deep breath and breathe in your character so that the world may know who we are and from whence we come and where we're going. In the name of your son, we pray. Now let's stand and, and sing hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance. <coughs> who surprised me this morning. It's my cousin who uh, came. I, uh, I surprised her about a year ago when I stopped by her congregation. But I want to say uh, it was good to see my cousin, Bernetta Wright from Kannapolis, and um, good to see you.
Now may the grace, mercy, and peace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. And remember, your character counts.